Hi, I'm Jason Levine, Principal Worldwide Evangelist for Adobe's Video and Audio Tools, and today I'm going to talk to you about some of the new features in Adobe Audition CS6. So I'll start here in the multi-track view, and one of the things that we've done is we've made it easy to begin the process of recording. Whether you're working with a band, a full band, or whether you're doing any kind of broadcast, whether you're trying to duck audio against music, we've got session templates to get you started big feature request, it's now in there. So to begin the process with a session template, we can go up to the File, New, Multitrack Session here, and we can give it a name. We can call this one VoiceOver. And then if we go to Template, you'll see that we have all different types of specific templates here. 24-track music session, full rock band, podcast, radio voiceover with music ducking. Interesting. Let's go ahead and choose that one, and that's just going to show you kind of what this looks like. Click OK. And when we actually select that now, you'll see that we have a voiceover track and a music track and a master. And if we actually go into the mixer here, what you'll see is that on the music track, we've implemented the Dynamics processor. So we'll get back to that later because it's already set up a side chain to automatically duck the music against the voiceover. Let's try another one here. File, New Multitrack Session, and choose something like Full Rock Band, and click OK. And when we do that, now you'll see that we have all these different tracks. We've even got a metronome in there. The metronome whose properties can be adjusted inside the properties panel, so you can adjust the tempo and the time signature. You can even adjust the subdivisions and the actual sound of the metronome. But you'll see that we've gone ahead and pre-labeled all of your tracks. You've got kick, snare, toms, overheads. We've got a subgroup of the drums with compression already added. So again, these templates are just an effort to really get you started and to speed up that process of working inside of Audition and to really make that experience the most effective. Now, beyond simple uh, session templates, we've also got new ways to actually access your media inside of Audition, and that, of course, is leveraging the new media browser. Now, if you've ever worked in Premiere Pro, this is probably going to look pretty familiar to you. It's the same. It's the same media browser where you can navigate to drives, removable drives, or cards attached to your machine in any way, shape, or form. Again, we can navigate to a folder here. You've got different options for previewing your media. So you'll see here that we have this autoplay button. We've got our loop button here. So simply by selecting a clip. Red Rider. Espero que hayas dormido un poco. So directly from the media browser, we can preview, autoplay, loop, and then drag and drop directly into the multitrack editor. Now, going beyond templates and actually accessing your files and the process of starting a project, we also allow you to manipulate your audio in a lot of new different ways directly inside the multitrack in real time. And to showcase this, I'm going to talk a little bit about clip time stretching. So if I zoom in on this track here, you'll see that we have a couple of clips that are already grouped, and we're going to use global clip time stretching. Now, this is implemented by turning on this radio button up here. You can see toggle global clip time stretch. And when we turn that on, you're going to see these little white handles appear in the upper left and right hand corners of your clips. Now again, these clips are already grouped together, but if we want to actually adjust the duration of a clip, and again we have complete control and independent control over time and pitch, we can simply grab the arrows here, stretch it out to fill a particular duration, and it will re-stretch. How do we set the properties for that? Well, that's all done inside the properties panel. So again, if we go down to stretch methods here, here's where you can choose whether you're in real time or rendered. And again, these are already grouped, so we might want different stretch methods for each clip. So we can simply ungroup these. Let's just uh, suspend the group, or even ungroup the selected clips, choose an individual clip, go down to stretch, and now I can choose whether I want real time, rendered, and the actual type, whether I want a monophonic or polyphonic stretch, which is going to allow me or give me independent control over pitch and time, or vary speed, which basically emulates classic resampling or classic tape style vary speeding, which of course is going to affect pitch based on the duration. So if you slow something down, it gradually gets longer. If you speed it up, it's shorter in duration. So that's what vary speed is going to give you, and that's really great for all different types of sound effects work. Now, when we're talking with stretching, one of the cool new features that we've added actually deals directly with working with ADR, or dialogue replacement tracks, and that's a new feature called Auto Speech Alignment. So if I scroll up here, you'll see that we have some dialogue, and actually this is in a different session, so let's go to this one here, that we wanted to replace. So here is the original voiceover. Red Rider, I trust you got some sleep last night. And here is the new voiceover. Red Rider. I trust you got some sleep last night. Kind of sounds familiar. And if I actually wanted to align these together, again, previously, this would have been fairly difficult. You'd be doing a lot of spotting, a lot of manual moving around, and you'd probably never get it exactly right. Well, in Adobe Audition CS6 with automatic speech alignment, it's very simple. Let's go ahead and solo both of these. 
going to select both of my clips, go up to the clip menu and choose automatic speech alignment. You're going to choose what the reference clip is. So again, the reference clip is going to be the original. Now typically, this would be the audio that was captured on the camera. So if you were replacing the dialogue and you wanted it to be in sync, you would reference the original camera audio. In this case for us, it's this clip here, DIA Red Stunt Voice. You can then choose the type of alignment that you want to implement. You can either use the tightest alignment, balanced alignment and stretching, or the smoothest stretching. I typically use this balanced alignment and stretching. That tends to give me the best results. You can see that the reference clip here is noisy. So if you have a noisy reference clip, it'll take that into account when it's actually trying to stretch to match these clips together. Add a line clip to a new track. Click OK. Happens very quickly. And now you can see we have our line clip here in track three. And we can play a bit of this back. And let's play this against the original. I'll take that as a yes. I think we have something you might enjoy. And they're brilliantly aligned. Literally done with a single operation very, very quickly. And this really saves you an enormous amount of time because if you had to manually sync ADR, well, it could take forever and you just might not ever get it right. Fantastic new feature. Now, with automatic speech alignment, we also have automatic pitch correction. So you now have the ability to actually correct pitch with uh, vocals or instruments that are out of key or out of tune very simply. And you can do that either in real time in the multi track or in the edit view. So let's go ahead and pull up another session here and very quickly show this to you. So I'm going to choose my pitch correction session. And if you take a quick listen to this vocal, you'll hear what I'm talking about. It needs a little help. Okay. So again, let's go over to our effects panel, time and pitch, automatic pitch correction. Once again, lots of different options. The first thing you need to do is choose the scale and the key. If you don't know the scale and the key, you have a chromatic option, but typically you're going to get better results if you use the actual scale and key of the song. So you need to kind of know that. If you don't, you can use chromatic. You'll still get pretty good results. You then have your attack and sensitivity. I'm going to leave these at the defaults. If you want really aggressive or very sort of modern pop record sounding correction, you can adjust that attack to a very fast attack. And maybe let's increase it just a little to around five or so. Your reference channel doesn't matter it's a mono file in this case, and your FFT size. This is effectively the number of slices that the automatic pitch corrector looks at when it's looking at each individual pitch. It's my preference that fewer slices give you better pitch correction, so I'll typically set this to around an FFT of 1024. Go ahead and hit play. Let's wind this back a little bit. And you'll actually see how much it's correcting in sense with this very nice correction meter here, whether it's flat or sharp. So a great way to automatically correct your pitches in real time in the multi-track. Absolutely fantastic. Now I've been talking a lot about voices and speech and voiceover and vocals. And one of the most requested features that people have been asking for in Adobe Audition is I just want to be able to side chain a compressor. In other words, I have music, I have a voiceover, and when the voiceover starts going, I want the music to duck down right, so that the voice is prominent. And then when the voice stops, the music comes back up. Well, this is known as side chaining. And now we have side chaining in Adobe Audition CS6. Now you'll recall at the beginning of this, we actually have a session template for ducking with voiceover and music. So let's go back to that session here, voiceover. Again, this is already created for you. Everything is already set up for you. So I'll go over to my files panel. And let's go ahead and choose our voiceover, which is already labeled. So we're going to stick that in track one. It's going to convert it if the sample type doesn't match. And let's go ahead and take our music and drag that into track two. Same thing, it's going to convert the sample type. Okay. Now, for best practices, I will typically normalize or maximize the volume of these clips just to give you better results. You don't have to do this, but I find that this generally works better. So I can double click to bring this into the edit view again. Very fast editing. And with my heads up display here, we have a nice little decibel adjustment. I can simply make this a little bit louder. Let's go about 5 dB louder. Looks good. And we're going to do the same on the music here. Let's just increase this by just about 4, 4.5 dB or so. Great. So now, inside the multitrack, if I go into the mixer, again, on the music, you'll see that we have a dynamics processor added, where we've already told it we've got a sidechain effect. If you look at the little uh, tooltip here, you can see set sidechain input. In this case, it's coming from stereo. And then you have your sidechain routing. Again, this is all done for you. You don't even have to change any of these things. Click it out here. On track one, where you have the voiceover, under the sends is actually where you choose 
what input this is going to use. This is already preset for you as well. So once again, let's twirl these up so I can show it to you. You can see here we've got sidechain. It's automatically going to music slot one, the dynamics processor right there. Let's go ahead and play this back. And now when the voice kicks in, you'll hear the music duck down. Take a listen. Red Rider, I trust you got some sleep last night. I'll take that as a yes. Now, if we turn the side chain off, in case you're wondering, well, it sounds pretty good, but how loud was the music to begin with? Well, let's just go ahead and turn off the dynamics processor altogether, and now take a listen. Red Rider, I trust you got some sleep last night. Okay, so a nice way to see it is actually to look inside the mixer if you weren't exactly hearing what was happening. So if you pay attention down here, we actually have the, the peak levels of the audio as it's playing back. And you'll see that when the voiceover starts talking, it's going to drop down to below minus 10, minus 14. And when the voiceover stops speaking, the music is going to go back up. Take a listen. I'll take that as a yes. I think we have something you might enjoy. Now, if you want to send more voice to the compressor, if you actually want to adjust those levels so that the voice is really significantly louder than the actual music itself, you can actually readjust those settings by adjusting the send level here on the voice track. So if I increase that even more, wind this back and hit play. Red Rider. I trust you got some sleep last night. Now you can really hear there's a very large difference between when the voice is on, the music is much lower. When it stops talking, the music goes up much faster. So again, you can adjust those send levels right there to really fine tune how you want that ducking to sound. Very cool, very fast, and very effective. And again, probably one of the most highly requested things I've heard over the years. Now, beyond working with that, we also have all kinds of new formats and export options to work with when you're in Audition CS6. So when it's time to actually export your multi-track creations or your edited creations, we can go File, Export, Time Selection, or Entire Session. And here's where you can choose to do things like create either stems or a stereo or mono file. And once again, choose the format that you're going to go to. Lots of new formats for import and export in Adobe Audition CS6. If you go into the mix down options here, here's where you can choose mono, stereo, or 5.1 if you're working in a surround sound mix. And this is where you can also export individual track stems if you so desire. So we can go ahead and do that if we want. We're just going to cancel out of this. Now, beyond formats for import and export, one of the other great things that we've added back to Adobe Audition CS6 is CD burning. So directly from the waveform editor here, you can select your clips or you can use markers. Go to the file menu, export, and choose burn audio to CD. Again, you can choose the speed, the right mode, the number of copies. You can add verification if you so desire. It's just a very quick way to create a Redbook standard disk right from the waveform editor, right out of Audition, really optimizing that workflow. And again, just giving you more flexibility in things that you didn't have before. So we've talked about CD burning, new formats, side chaining, pitch correction, speech alignment, new editing methods, clip stretching. That's really just a taste of some of the new incredible features in Adobe Audition CS6.